Hi everyone, welcome to Fusion Law School. At first glance, IPR and competition law are like fire and water. However, anyone who has seen a steam engine knows that if water and fire are combined in the right way, it can lead to positive results. I think this is the best analogy for the relationship between IPR and competition law. In the last note, we discussed some of the economic theories governing the relationship between competition law and IPR. In this lecture, we will discuss the TRIPS agreement and competition law issues. So let's start this lecture. I'm sure you must have heard about TRIPS agreement. In case you haven't, the agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights or TRIPS agreement is an international agreement administered by World Trade Organization that lays down minimum standards for various forms of intellectual property that must be incorporated by WTO members in their national legislations. The TRIPS agreement also enumerates guidelines for interaction of intellectual property rights and competition law. The essence of the same can be narrowed down to three guiding principles, which are A. It is up to the determination of each nation to reserve its own IPR related competition policy. B. It is required to have consistency between the principles laid down in TRIPS agreement and IPR related competition policy of member states. C. The focus of member states should majorly be centered around targeting those practices that are restricting the dissemination of protected technologies. The TRIPS agreement provide adequate guidelines and discretion to member states to avoid the deadlock between the two domains of IPR and competition law. However, TRIPS agreement on the issue of competition law is mere facilitating than being mandatory. Despite this, the objectives and principles of TRIPS agreement can guide us in attaining the competitive balance required for facilitating innovation along with economic growth. Now let's discuss some of the provisions under TRIPS agreement that deal with competition law issues. Article 8.2 of the TRIPS agreement acknowledges the right of member states to act against abuse of intellectual property rights provided such action is consistent with the provision of the agreement. Article 8.2 of TRIPS agreement reads as follows. I quote, appropriate measures provided that they are consistent with the provisions of this agreement may be needed to prevent the abuse of intellectual property rights by right holders or the resort to practices which unreasonably restrain trade or adversely affect the international transfer of technology." Unquote. In addition to TRIPS agreement, there are other international charters as well which grant the member states a discretion while dealing with anti-competitive practices. For instance, Article 46 of the 1948 Havana Charter for the International Trade Organization contained an undertaking by members to prevent restraints on competition and to cooperate with the organization in preventing such restraints. It also permitted the member states to bring a complaint to the organization when another member state was failing to deal with a competition related situation. Moreover, in 1980, the UN General Assembly also adopted a resolution on this subject. It has a very long name. Let me try it. The name is The Set of Multilaterally Agreed Equitable Principles and Rules for the Control of Restrictive Business Practices. This resolution also contained rules relating to abusive practices in the field of intellectual property rights. Article 31K of TRIPS agreement acknowledges that compulsory licensing is a remedy available to correct abuse of intellectual property rights. This provision reads as follows. I quote, Members are not obliged to apply the conditions set forth in subparagraph B and F 
where such use is permitted to remedy a practice determined after judicial or administrative process to be anti-competitive. The need to correct anti-competitive practices may be taken into account in determining the amount of remuneration in such cases. Competent authorities shall have the authority to refuse termination of authorization if and when the conditions which led to such authorization are likely to recur. Article 31K is the only part of the TRIPS compulsory licensing rules that incorporates a waiver of the condition that compulsory licenses must be issued predominantly for the supply of the domestic market. However, compulsory licensing is not the only remedy available for anti-competitive abuses of IPRs which may include inter alia injunction and fines. The TRIPS agreement provides WTO members with substantial discretion in the development and application of competition law to arrangements and conducts in the field of intellectual property rights. Now we will discuss the remedies provided under TRIPS agreement for anti-competitive licensing. Article 40 deals with anti-competitive licensing and practices. It clearly gives discretionary power to the member states to specify what amounts to abuse of intellectual property rights in their state legislature. Now let's read Article 40 of TRIPS Agreement. Clause 1 reads, I quote, Members agree that some licensing practices or conditions pertaining to intellectual property rights which restrain competition may have adverse effects on trade and may impede the transfer and dissemination of technology." Unquote. Now the clause 2 reads as, I quote, Nothing in this agreement shall prevent members from specifying in their legislation licensing practices or conditions that may in particular cases constitute an abuse of intellectual property rights having an adverse effect on competition in the relevant market. As provided above, a member may adopt, consistently with the other provisions of this agreement, appropriate measures to prevent or control such practices, which may include, for example, exclusive grant back conditions, conditions preventing challenges to validity and coercive package licensing, in the light of the relevant laws and regulations of that member. This provision is broadly applicable to restrictive practices relating to all different types of intellectual property rights even though both the legislative history and the examples given in Article 40.2 focus primarily on the licensing and transfer of technology rather than on trademark or copyright licensing. At the same time, these provisions are only concerned with the abusive exercise of intellectual property rights and with certain licensing practices and conditions. In this sense, both unilateral and bilateral IPR related conduct of an anti-competitive nature is covered in this provision. A further distinction is then made between restrictive practices affecting licensing in general and those having a bearing on technology transfer in particular. Lastly, it is important to remember that other potentially anti-competitive arrangements including merger and acquisitions are left outside the reach of the TRIPS agreement. With this, we would like to conclude this lecture. In this lecture, we discussed how TRIPS agreement deals with competition law issues. As always, if you have any doubts or queries about this lecture, please feel free to contact us on the email ID given here. Thanks for the time and attention.